Hi, Al Williams with Hackaday here. Uh, I wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to cobble up something using the embed development environment. Uh, that's something put up by ARM. It's a C compiler, actually C++ compiler, and it's all based on the web. And it's made to work with uh, a lot of different platforms. I'm in particular, I'm going to use the Freescale KL25Z. Very inexpensive platform, pretty capable. There's a couple of larger ones that are not much more than that. And uh, I'll show you a little quick demo with that. So the first thing you'd have to do, well, I guess the first thing you have to do once you get to the embed site is create an account. I've already got one and I'm logged in. And you also need to put the platform you want to use into your supposed development environment, which like I said, is all in the cloud. So there's a bunch of different boards, as you can see here, um, from a lot of different vendors. So if you really want something larger, you know, you can look. There's Some of these have a lot of different I.O. on them. There's some low power choices. Uh, it just goes on and on. There's stuff with Bluetooth and low power Bluetooth and uh, white, paper white displays, you know, the e-ink displays, so all sorts of things. Uh, I'm going to pick what I have, which was way up at the top, and that's the FRDM KL25Z. You can see 128K flash, 16K of RAM. It runs fairly fast. I think there's a max of 50 megs on it, and by default I think it's running at about 48 megahertz, something like that. So I've already picked this, but if you hadn't already picked it, there would be a button here that says Add to My Development Environment, something like that. You'd want to click that. In my case, I've already done that. And you can click on Compiler. That'll take you to this environment here. Yours might not be as busy as mine because you probably don't have all these projects in here, but uh, you'll fill it up soon enough, I'm sure. So up here is where the actual development type is. So if you have a bunch of different boards, you can see the different boards I use here, you'd need to make sure you'd pick the right one. Uh, in this case, we already are on the right one, so that's okay. If you only had one, I don't think this would be a problem, but just to show you, you need to make sure that's there and hit select platform. So as long as that says FRDM KL25Z or whatever board it is that you have, you're fine. So I'm going to wing this a little bit, but I think I can remember what I wanted to do here. I'm going to go make a new program. And you can see it gives you some templates to pick from uh, for this particular platform. I am going to take something a little more complicated than the blinky LED Hello World program and I'm going to pick the TSI analog slider demo. Uh, the board actually has a little analog resistive slider. I think it's resistive, maybe it's capacitive, but anyway, there's a little spot on the PC board, and if you touch that spot, you can slide your finger along it, and you'll get different readings out, and it'll read from 0 to 1. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that as a template, and I'm going to call this uh, Hackaday Demo 1 and I'll hit OK. Now keep in mind this is with no software at all installed on my side except the web browser. So you can see there's a TSI sensor library here, there's a main CPP, and there's the embed library. Now if you look over here in your program workspace, if you click on the different pieces you can see what's in them. You can expand it out and there's even some documentation for that library. So if you wanted to go figure out what's in that library that you could use, you can take a look at that and it'll make it clear to you. But in our case, I think the template file is going to make that obvious enough. So if we go over to main CPP, you can see we include the embed.h. That's sort of the environment. There's all sorts of calls. There's very good documentation for that. So if you need to use the serial port or do I.O., if you've ever used ARM processors before, you know that because they're jealous of power, you know, to get to an I.O. pin, you've probably got to turn on some particular bus, and you've got to uh, assign a clock to that bus, and then you've got to make sure that that pin's multiplexed to the right I.O. Embed does all that for you. Now, is it as efficient as you might do yourself? Well, perhaps not, but it's plenty good, uh, and it works really well for a fast prototype, something on the order of what you might do with an Arduino. 
And we have a KL25Z here, so this is just defining the pins. There's a KL46Z board, which is very similar, but has it's a little bit bigger capability-wise. It also has a few different I.O., but it also has the same electronic slider, but obviously it's hooked up to different pins. Uh, well, actually, I guess in that case it's the same pins, and then the KL05Z, it's hooked up to different pins. So either of those three, any of those three boards could in fact handle this and it would just pick the right pins based on that. And then very simple, PWM out, LED green. There's a three color LED. And then TSI analog slider, TSI electrode zero, electrode one, and 40. Again, those are defined up here. And we'll say while true, LED equal one minus the percentage red and we'll wait for 0.1 second and so that's very simple it's going to make a green LED light up now we'll do something a little more complicated here in a second because remember, we've got this three color LED on the board, but for right now, let's build this and see how it actually programs. You don't need a special programmer. The board plugs in as a USB device and it looks like a USB drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and compile this. And since I didn't make any changes, I'm hoping it'll come right on out and it does. And it says, okay, where do you wanna put this? Well, I've made a folder over here to put it. And if you'll notice, in that folder, that's where I put the bin file. And over here, this folder is the mounted drive that's actually the development board. Now how you mount it is going to depend a lot on what platform you're using. If you're using Windows or if you're using a particular Linux distro. I'm using Linux. When I plug it in, I get a little notification and I can mount it. And when I mount it, it comes up in slash media slash my username slash FRDM KL25Z. So you can see there's some files in here. There's a little web page that tells you some information. There's a status of the last operation. Uh, but none of this is really important except maybe that last status if you start having trouble programming. As long as you see that, you can just take this, drag it over, let go. You could use the command line, if you, I usually do, if you prefer. Or I sometimes write a little script that will just automatically move things over. I do move them. And the reason I move them is otherwise I'm going to start getting strange file names over in that other directory when I start loading the thing again, right? It's going to want to put a 1 after it or something, and I don't, I don't care for that. Uh, so I'm just going to dispose of that file by moving it over here. You might think, well, wait a minute. Why didn't I just download it to this folder? The problem is the web browser is going to usually put some name in there like haddemo1.crdownload and then when it's done, and it'll be done very quickly because it's a small file, it's going to rename it and that really confuses the processor. So you don't want to download straight to here. You want to download somewhere and then move it over. And Once you move it, you'll see some activity and the board should be programmed at that point and you can't see it of course because you're looking at my screen but if I sit and move the slider I get a dim green light until I get all the way over I get a bright green light okay so that's as easy as it is to program it just drag it over there if you go look at your last text here it says ready so it didn't give me any error and say, well, you know, something went wrong. So that's good. It programmed, although I could tell that because you could see the program was working. But sometimes that's useful to have a little troubleshooting info. So let's make this template application a little more interesting. Uh, you see we've already got PWM out LED, LED green. I'm going to change that to read LED G. And then I'm going to add a PWM out for LED R called red, excuse me, LED red, and then I'm going to add another PWM out, LED B, and you might guess that's LED blue, so that's my red, green, and blue LEDs, which are one physical LED on the board, so they're going to mix together. So now I want to do something a little different. 
let's see we're already here I'm gonna put this in and take a float F so now I've got my percentage it's gonna be between 0 and 1 and I'm gonna say if S excuse me if F is less than I don't know 0 0.05 so I basically say well nothing's happening you're all the way over to the left or so close to all the way over to the left that it doesn't matter then I'm gonna say LED B is equal to 0, 0.0 so that's gonna basically turn the blue LED off actually I believe it'll turn it on I believe the LEDs are backwards they're uh, grounded and I'm gonna say LED G equal LED R equal 1.0 so that'll put those in the opposite state which I think is actually off so I think we get a blue LED when we're not touching the pad or the pads just were way over on the left and then I'll put an else here so if we're not all the way over I'm gonna say let's take the blue LED and turn it off and I'll say the red LED is going to be 1.0 minus F. Remember, F is the percentage we read from the touch slider. So that's going to give me an inverse relationship there. And LED G is going to just equal F. That'll give me a non-inverse, if you will, relationship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to blend red and green together about midway I should get equal parts all the way over on one side I should get green all the way over on the other side I get red until I get way over on the other side at which point the whole thing turns blue to tell me that it's quiescent okay so the PWM objects are part of embed and again that's how easy it is to set up IO you say hey I need a PWM output on this particular pin and I want to call it something LED G R and B those are just arbitrary names um, it's kind of convenient to have floating point for things like the delays and the percentages, although honestly as a old time embedded guy it makes me nervous using floating point in something like this because it's generally not very efficient. You can kind of get around that in some cases. In this particular case we've got plenty of overhead for what we're trying to do, so I went ahead and didn't do any of those things. I left them as floating point. But uh, this is just standard old C++ with uh, objects that were provided to do the PWM and the slider. So let's do the compile. Once again, we're here with a file. We didn't have to rename it because we already have the same name because we moved it. We didn't copy it. I'm going to go back to my file manager. I'm going to drag it over here. I'm going to move it. Now, in this particular case, it's smart enough to say, hey, wait, that file's already there. Okay, that's fine. I'll overwrite it and the board reprograms itself. Sure enough, I have a blue light. You can see as I touch the touchpad, the LED will turn all green because I'm all the way to the left. Then as I move to the right, it mixes in some red to make an orange color until you get all the way to red. And then I'll come back to say about the halfway point You'll see it fading back to orange and then all the way back to green with no red in it at all. And you can see around here is the touch sensor and obviously this is a three color LED and that's the KL25Z board running the program that we just looked at. These boards are very inexpensive. It couldn't be simpler to install the software because you don't install any software you just load up this web page and you're, you're ready to go and uh, you don't even need a programmer just the serial cable comes with it plugs into a regular serial port I think if you're running Windows you may need a driver for it uh, especially if you want to get to the serial port I'm not 100% sure about that because I mostly run Linux but uh, the documentation tells you all that that might be the only thing you have to install if you're running Windows if you're running Linux and I think the Mac also it just kind of works and uh, it's really cool so you know there's a lot you can do with this if you go look through the embed documentation in particular the handbook here there's just lots of things that you can do as far as you know analog in digital you can treat the digital as bits or buses or ports uh, PWM which we've seen interrupts timers 
I've got a lot to say about timers, but we'll do that in a future date. Um, you've already seen the weights. You've got Serial, Spy, I2C, CAN. Uh, there's an RTOS available that you can just plug in there by asking it to include that library. You know, file systems, USB, of course, you've got to have the hardware to support some of this. Networking, same thing. So, pretty complete library. And there's also a lot of user-contributed libraries that you can get to from this import. And I won't cover that too much just to point out to you there's a lot of stuff in here that people have contributed and you can contribute as well. Uh, as you can see, it does take a little while to load up and you can bookmark things you want to be able to find back. But, you know, if you need to get to an LCD or if you want to uh, run a servo, things like that, there's a lot of user-contributed libraries that will let you do that. And you can search these and just include them into your program and if they did it right, you get the documentation just like I showed you for the sensor. So overall, really well done system. 32-bit power running at a high clock rate uh, for, you know, very little money in this particular case for this board. You can get boards that are more expensive, of course, that have more capability. But very easy to use, very inexpensive. I'm a big fan, so thanks for watching.